thank you so much for coming down here. It's fantastic to see you here. I also see some ex students from our ICANN conferences, so thank you so much. Um, I don't understand one thing though, since I've come in the morning, it's extremely serious here. So, a little bit about myself I am, uh, I do a little bit of stand up comedy on the side, so I'm not used to such a serious audience. This kind of silence freaks me out. People at the ICANN conference, you know this. So, you gotta help me with this. Please give me some noise. I get palpitations, I might just get a heart attack. So, please. Okay, can you please give me some noise, people? Especially, yeah? That was depressing, but anyway, uh, I knew you would do this, which is why I've got a bag there. Uh, if you saw me carry around a bag, I've got a bag full of chocolates, Ferreros, because I'm swanky like that. So what we're going to do is as follows before I start this side of the aisle, on the count of three, you're going to shout, we love you, Tejveer and Imad. Okay? <laughs> yeah, we do. Tejveer and Imad, if you didn't know, both the handsome guys who started off, they've organized the whole thing. And then on the count of three, this side is going to shout, we love you, Tejveer and Imad. Whoever's louder, I throw the Ferreros. Uh, people from the ICANN conferences, you know I do this all the time. Okay, into the audience. Do you want me to do this? If not, we can just start off. Yes or no? We want chocolates. You want chocolates. Nikita, I knew that. Okay, uh, brilliant, brilliant. So on the count, and Tejvi Rimad, are you guys here? Brilliant, you need to decide who loves you more. Okay, okay, you decide that. This side, on the count of three, we love you Tejvi and Imad. One, two, three. Okay, that's not shouting, guys. Please, <laughs> last. We don't have too much time. Tejvi is giving the stare already. Okay, I'll give you one more chance. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, uh, <laughs> uh, it's all right. Get used to this kind of love. Um, okay, this side on the count of three. Okay, yeah, these Ecole girls are all ready to eat chocolates. <laughs> one, two, three. All right, Tejvi, Ramad, who loves you more? You gotta decide. You gotta decide. No, they don't. Choose a side. Choose a side. Your right or my right? Okay. Anyway, anyway. So, um, thank you very much. You guys were absolutely depressing as usual. So, um, um, lesson one from my TEDx speech. Do not trust too many people, especially when they say they've got free chocolates for you. There are no free lunches. But thank you very much for uh, livening it up for me. Uh, you can start my clock now. I thank you very much for firstly inviting me down here. It really is an honor, especially to share the stage with such stalwarts. It truly is an honor. And a big congratulations to the Dune School and especially to the TEDx team. Um, Tejveer and Imad, you guys are doing a fantastic job. Well done. As much as I do have a receding hairline, I'm not 28 though, as has been mentioned in the speaker bio. I'm only 26. <laughs> Moving on to 27. Uh, which, unless I'm mistaken, makes me one of the younger, more junior speakers here today with relatively very little experience of life. But considering that the majority of the audience here is high school students, I will attempt to share a few of my learnings that I've had in the past few years that I believe are most relevant and useful for high school students. So, ladies and gentlemen, may I ask who I'm a lover boy, yo? <laughs> yeah. That was the opening line for my debate back in school at a really serious and prestigious kind of a debate like this. Um, I'm from here, batch of 2009, the Dune School, and back in school I used to debate a lot. And I would say the weirdest, craziest things on stage, and trust me, this was not as close to how weird I got on stage. And I used to feel extremely cool about it. And why wouldn't I? I could do anything. Man, I was a super cool achiever with a hundred feathers in my hat because I was a cool cat like that. You know, scholar's blazer, house captain, prefects representative to the school council, school disciplinary committee, school colors awarding committee, double English debating colors, Hindi debating colors. You gotta like count and clap when I say this, you know. Uh, house colors, <laughs> lambda gold, top my batch at ICSE. Ladies, be like, damn, I was on top of the world, man. Nobody could do all that I did. You know, you know what I'm saying? Nobody could do all that I did and that made me a cocky little kid. <laughs> Pardon the French. Insolent fella. My Hindi teacher used to say in English, which, but anyway. <laughs> point is, I was on top of the world and then I fell. In love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> With a Wellum girl, which is the most characteristic fall that most Doscos experience, don't they? 
I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, girls, I love you. I told you I do a little bit of stand-up comedy, so I might just crack a couple of jokes on you. Please don't, please don't take offense. It's all in good humor. You're not taking offense, are you? No, great, because there's more coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love you, well, girls. I love you. Most of you. Uh, anyway, anyway, I, I, was, I was in love, and it was brilliant, man. It was beautiful. It was amazing. Till we broke up. You're laughing. By choice. Her choice. But anyway, uh, you're, it's really serious. You guys are insensitive because I was heartbroken. I went completely devdas. Yeah, you're still laughing. I'm, I was down there, man. And around the same time, uh, my grandfather passed away. My paternal grandfather. And a uh, month and a half later, my maternal grandfather passed away. So my parents were pretty distraught. There was a lot of crying at home, a lot of fighting. Not a uh, pretty scene at all. Since I was really young, I had been at the top of my class academically pretty consistently, pardon the lack of humility. But around this time, when I needed the marks the most to get into a good college, I was anyway going through so much, I didn't get the marks. And my, my ego got hurt. My self-confidence was shaken. And I went through this really grueling and humiliating process of going, of auditioning through the extracurricular activity quota debate at Delhi University, which is where I wanted to go. Luckily, I did get into a good college, but uh, only to realize that Delhi University was just not my thing. With all due respect to Delhi University, it's a great place. They're doing brilliant things, but I was a misfit there. And I just hated going to college. I, I didn't even have that solace. I'll be very honest and candid with you, I, I was also scared of going to college. Because from where I stayed, on my way to college, I had to cross my ex-girlfriend's college. Which is not funny. I, I was scared I would see her with her new boyfriend. It is really not funny. <laughs> I did see them a couple of times. And I just completely killed me, man. Like, you know that kind of a feeling. I didn't have a girlfriend then. I started to make wrong decisions. I uh, decided to pursue chartered accountancy, which again is a super brilliant course, by the way, for the record. No offense meant. I was a misfit there. It just, it was contrary to my personality and I, it started to pull me down even more. Once I heard my parents talk about um, some normal business problems and I started to think that we're in some major financial distress which was not the case in retrospect, but the environment around me was so negative. My frame of mind was so negative that I started to perceive everything way more negatively than it actually was. And before I knew it, I went into clinical depression for two to three years of my life. Two to three precious, youthful, undergraduate years of my life were wasted just being depressed. I was also suicidal for a month in between, within this time. And you've become extremely serious now. <laughs> so anyway, after two, three years, I slowly started rebuilding myself. And with God's grace, touch wood, I got back to normal. Now, why did I tell you about this entire episode of my life? There were a lot of learnings that came in that, that would be pretty relevant for you because you might be facing them now or would face them soon, uh, three of which really stood out. I will bullet them and then I will elaborate on them. One, arrogance is foolish. Humility is sexy. Two, emotional intelligence is the name of the game. And three, stay away from Wellum girls. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. This has got too serious. Okay. Uh, both these learnings, you know, uh, prima facie, by the sound of it, they're pretty obvious. We know we need to be humble. Everyone tells us we should not be arrogant. But deny it all you want. We are arrogant every day, however much we know we shouldn't be. 
How we speak with our superiors is very different from how we speak with our inferiors. The very fact that we do consider someone inferior, subconsciously if not consciously, is arrogance. There are some people whose phone calls we will return immediately and then there are others who we'll take our own sweet time with. That is arrogance. So why don't we just follow these simple concepts? I think it's because we do not really understand the fundamental logic behind them. We do not, we do not understand the gravity of that logic. So it's very simple. Most of us are arrogant because of our achievements. Unless you're from Delhi, in which case you're arrogant about your dad's money. <laughs> <laughs> the air is polluted there in ways more than one. <laughs> um, I'm kidding, Delhi people are not. Um, anyway, so most of us are arrogant because of our achievements. And it's very simple. Your and my achievements, please note, your and my achievements are not your and my achievements. They are the consequence of the universe coming together in ways that you and I cannot even attempt to understand. Really, that brings about, that bring about circumstances and resources that lead to those achievements. For example, if you and I tomorrow were to become great people and we impact the world in a positive way and create a big name for ourselves, a large part of it, this is very basic stuff, a large part of it is attributable to the fact that you and I were lucky enough to come to prestigious and great institutions like the one that we're standing in. Because our parents could afford it, because they had the vision to send us here, because we got in here, we really didn't do too much, we just simply got lucky, man. Relative to the expanse of the universe, you, me, the President of the United States of America, were insignificant specks of dust. You know, to put things into perspective, they say that if the Earth's history were to be concentrated into 24 hours, just the Earth, not the universe, if the Earth's history were to be concentrated into 24 hours, mankind as we know it would start to exist only in the last two minutes of the 24th hour. We are that insignificant. There is nothing that we can possibly even think of doing that warrants any kind of arrogance. So please be humble in every aspect of life. And just in case this becomes too spiritual for your liking and you don't really agree with this too much, there's another perspective to humility, where practice humility for fear of karma, which is also slightly spiritual, but in my very limited experience of life, karma has hit intensively, immediately, unforgivingly, every time. Every time I have been arrogant about something or showed something off, it has come crashing down. One day I was on top of the world and just one year later I was suicidal. Arrogance is foolish. Success is like the Roman fickle crowd if you still read Shakespeare. Humility is sexy. Moving on to my second point about the emotional intelligence, which is my favorite because I face this a lot. Emotional stress today in today's youth is way more pronounced than it has ever been. Now, whether it be because of ultra-urbanization or enhanced modernization and the onset of social media and the consequential diminishing quality and quantity of personal conversation, this unnerving stress on physical attributes and this glamorization of frivolity and promiscuity all come together to cause this emotional stress, which has led to a crazy spike in the quantum and intensity of mental illnesses like depression that I faced immediately after high school. And therefore, this is an appeal to you as high school students to please start to focus your energies onto building your emotional quotient, which in my opinion today is much more important than the intelligence quotient that we keep working on. And I'm sorry, I'm going to be extremely candid. My teachers are here, but I'm standing in a school, but education in our country is nowhere close to what it could and should be. We know that. The majority of the schools in our country don't even think about the emotional quotient, let alone act on it. And some of the better schools do, but relative to international standards, I'm sorry, but we're nowhere. And therefore, till this infrastructure starts to get built, the prerogative starts to uh, fall on you as high school students, your parents, your teachers, the entire ecosystem, to please start to focus your energies, your time, your resources onto building that emotional quotient, because the problems that you're going to face are very different from the problems that your previous generations faced, and you need to be equipped to handle them. Now for paucity of time, I think I'm almost done there. I won't really get into how to build that emotional quotient, but just as a little sneak peek, as a little introduction, it's all about training your mind. It's about getting your mind in control and your emotions in control where each time, and listen carefully, each time 
you face a problem, where you don't think you have a solution. Each time you feel low and you don't know what to do, you've got to take a step back and start to treat that problem as an opportunity to prove to yourself and to the world your real worth. You need to take a step back and start to tell yourself that you will not fall into this spiral of negativity, that you will not succumb, that you will overcome, that you will ensure that the fire inside you burns brighter than the fire around you. Pardon the French, but in the words of the Wolf of Wall Street, they say that the only thing standing between you and your goal is that bullshit story that you keep telling yourself as to why you can't do it. You have a problem, you find a way out. You don't find one, you make one. They say that the rocket flies higher than the plane because its ass is on fire, so put that ass on fire and fly away people because you're destined for greatness and let nothing come in the way, not even yourself. Thank you. Emotional intelligence, people. Work on it. If nothing else, it'll help you stay happy. Which reminds me of a little something that I that I read somewhere, I think it was about John Lennon, but I'm not so sure, where the teacher asked the students to write an essay on what they want to be when they grow up. This one student wrote just one line. He wrote, when I grow up, I want to be happy. The teacher said to the student, I don't think you understood the assignment. The student said to the teacher, I don't think you understood life. <laughs>